what's going on guys welcome back again there's a lot of issues with the truck so be a couple videos back to back so we have a fuel line to replace i replaced four just because it was a problem child so sorry i didn't and plus there's plenty of videos on youtube about it today we're going to do fuel line six so i'll show you where that's at it's way back there let me go get my light <laughs> so you guys can see it That one right there that has a looks like someone tried to cut it and then you're going to remove that mount back there which is two bolts you got to tighten down the fuel line feeder and the fuel line nuts so we will get to it so i guess got to find the size of that hook there's two bolts on the back once i get that i'll come right back to you guys you know what guys we're going to try a different route because i can't get my there's two bolts back there the half inch we're gonna loosen up these fuel lines. I already went ahead and cracked them, but I'll show you which ones to loosen. Oh, that one, that one. Guys, I'm so sorry. As you can see, it's um, just having one of those days. I'm all filthy. I was gonna tell you, uh, I was gonna be right back. Well, I'm beating the sun, I'm beating the storm, and now I'm here. So, I guess I can just tell you guys, I'm so sorry. You know, this usually is not the way I do things, but it's pitch black. It's about 9 o'clock at night, and I started this about 6. Black everywhere. So, let me explain to you the best way. I know there's not a video about how to do this fuel injector 6 on face, uh, YouTube, and that's the reason why I wanted to do it. But, I'm going to put this light back here best as I can for you guys Start. so that bracket right there you have two 13 mils on the back of the block that's your that's your line and right there's your feeder tube and then it goes all the way up to I'm sorry guys right there that's where it goes so to change it that's virtually what you had to do what i had to use is a 22 mil oh sorry 15 16 because that's all i had but it is recommended to use 24 three quarter 90 nub thing 22 crow foot 19 crow foot Preferably, if you had a torque wrench about this long, you're in good shape, dude. Gold, good, good, good shape. Then I had to use a uh, knockdown three-quarter to half inch because that's what this crow's foot is. But to literally get into there, I wish I could show you how to do it, but every truck I know is different because not all trucks have boost tubes. Not all, not, not all trucks got aftermarket lift pumps, harnesses. Not all trucks have this stuff. So some of those harnesses, some trucks won't matter. But all it's it's a pain in the ass. Let me just tell you that much. And do not drop your crow's foot. I have a crow's foot somewhere in the back of the block. Can no, cannot find. It's just a nightmare. So let me go down to the back of the truck. I'll show you. You have to remove that bracket. That's the only way you can torque down your feeder tube. And you have to torque down your feeder tube when you actually change out your fuel lines. Yep. Look at all that dust and dirt and cum and mud. So here's your transmission, here's your transmission oil pan. Just to give you a point of reference. And there's a the starter. Basically, right there. You have a bolt there and a bolt there. One does not come out all the way, it's one of those hook style. But that one, you don't need to remove it all the way either. You just gotta loosen enough so you can move the bracket out of the way. And what I had to use is 13 ratchet best thing to do it's also a half inch hey guys i mean i can at least start it for you uh so we can make sure there's no leaks together i better just start it oh let me show you why i changed it i actually never showed you guys it's actually uh i'm the fifth owner of the truck no idea how this happened or what it was actually even from but check it so this is line six it goes into the block like this like if the light is the block and 
my pinky is the common reel. Look at this thing. It looks like someone cut it. And these things are notorious for vibrating itself to death and killing itself. It wasn't leaking, or it might have been leaking at the feeder tube, but no idea. So, just the more of that story is, like I said, this doesn't have a bracket, but the new ones do. And if your previous owners didn't remove stuff and never put it back. Oh, uh, oh sorry, let me get it to focus. So, there's supposed to be another hook here, right here, right where my finger's at. And that hook has got a stud, a nut, right there, boom. A stud that goes through that, where that bracket's at. And a nut will be mounted to, uh, I don't know what that's called, but this plate. And a nut on top of that to hold your fuel line. Uh, the factories do not put these on there, but they do aftermarketly. I'm going to have to find something to put in there or something just to keep that line in place. But yes, that's pretty much it, man. So if you have your studs, that that's where that bracket goes. And I recommend putting a bolt in there if you don't already have it. So, um, I guess we started and cross our fucking finger, fingers that we, um, sorry, kid friendly. Now there's no leaks. Let's see what happens. Let me tell you guys, it's been a hell of a past two and a half, three hours. And that storm is coming. That storm is coming. Oh, oh, you guys can't see me. Let's build pressure. Let's hope there's no leaks. As you can see, no leaks. Hell yeah. All right. Oh. Oh, Jesus. You know, when you think it's going to take five minutes, but it takes you all night, that was this job. So I guess the best advice I give you is participate being it more than five minutes. But great news. Uh, there's no leaks. But So I have torque specs if you guys want them, if you guys even care for them. Some of you guys just do ugga duggas and call it a day. So you need a 24 mil socket for the head side feeder tube. You need a 22 mil socket. Sorry, uh, stubby. Your best friends are going to be stubby sockets. Little tiny little dinky guys. So 24 stubby, particularly a six point, a 22 stubby six point. And you need a 19 foot crow's foot or 19 mil crow's foot. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So you, I have it written down right here. Your Sorry, and a 19 mil open wrench. So what you're gonna need your your fill lines are 19 mil. That's 22 foot pounds. 22 foot pounds. Do not over tighten them and do not leave them too loose. You will have issues. They seal by the flare side. So if you don't torque it enough, it will leak. If you torque it too much, it will actually crack. And then your feeder tube is 37 foot pounds for both sides, for the head side and the fill rail side. There is two feeder, feeder tubes on this. Well, I don't know what the other one's actually called. I call it a feeder tube, but it's the same instance. It's a basically a feeder tube for the fuel rail side. You'll see it right when you get into your engine bay and look at this. Started it, no leaks, freaking awesome. Um, I did find a bolt while we were on hold. Let me show you. So, right there, now you can see a little bolt in there. Oh, right there, there it is. You guys can see that now. Right there, now. I just made a bolt, a washer, and then I found a giant like old lug nut looking thing that I found in my toolbox, about this tall, for a washer. And then the bolt goes all the way through, and then I put a washer and a nylon nut. Something you guys can get at Home Depot. And then make sure this bracket is tight. This is a 532nd Allen wrench. That's all you guys need. You know, I'm really sorry this wasn't a better informational video. 
but I know there's only one other video for fuel line six for the five nine Cummins. And this has to be the second one I, I, I've searched just to give me some insight on it. But all you guys are really gonna need is a 13 mil. My recommendation is a 13 mil ratcheting and box in for that bracket. The bracket's gonna kick your ass all day long. You need a 532nd Allen wrench to tighten down the fuel line clamp if, you, if yours comes with one. If not, then toss it in the trash. Mine was three quarter, but you do need one of these flexible uh, elbow. You're gonna need, I use a 22 crow's foot to tighten up that uh, fuel rail side of the feeder tube. You need a 19 mil crow's foot for the fuel lines. Um, like I said, 22 short, 24 short, maybe just miscellaneous extensions and a torque wrench. Your best friend is going to be a stubby torque wrench. So I'll put it, uh, put a link where I bought this. I, I bought it on rock out of same with line four. I didn't make a video for line four because there's already the thoroughbred makes a really good one. There's a couple other guys who make really good ones. Don't need for me to make another one online. This particular one, line six, is only one video, other video. And I mean, he doesn't even take your phone back there, but he does tell you all the torque specs. He does a great job on that aspect. But at least I put my phone back to her camera to show you guys what the heck it's, what you're looking for and what the heck you're going to fight for. And I'm sorry, it's pitch black and it's about ready to storm again. So can't think of anything else, guys. Oh, I have a couple other videos coming up. My fan, clutch, my fan clutch is shot, my water pump is shot, my thermostat I'm changing, my coolant temp sensor I'm changing. All videos, man. My truck, you know, just, you know, funny little side story. I know you, some of you guys are subscribers for a reason and you guys know me. We uh, travel a lot with this truck. This truck is the highway, highway getter. It's not, it doesn't do anything off road. It just gets us to long distances instead of taking the wife's car because one, fuel prices are through the damn roof. Second, it's just a better overall long haul type of vehicle because the diesels last forever, less maintenance, yada, yada, yada. But besides the point, we're, we're headed to uh, my brother-in-law's wedding in Southern California. The passenger driver tire was literally about to blow up. I, I, I can post a video here for, for, for a quick reference. It was separating from the sidewall and I, these tires are four years old. I bought a brand new, I bought the truck brand new with brand new tires off from a dealership uh, five years, four years ago. I don't even remember. We were driving halfway there, about two hours in the trip. I had a four and a half hour trip and the truck just starts rocking like, like, like your, you know, easiest way to put it. Told my wife and told my, my, my dad that it felt like you're driving one of those old square body Chevys with no, uh, no shocks, just leaf springs. And you just, that's the whole way. No fun. Gave my wife a headache. Gave me a headache. Gave the kids headaches. Uh, luckily, I didn't know what was happening. I just, I had one mission. It was to get to uh, my dad's driveway so we can pop, pop, throw the truck in park and investigate, tear it apart if we have to. And you know, my dad's a good eye. He's the one who taught me everything I know, and then some on vehicles. First thing he looked at was that tire, and he said, "Well, here's your issue." So, a thousand bucks later, got all for new rubbers. So, congratulations on that. But meanwhile, while I was driving. Uh, there's a fat grade. I can't. I don't know the percentage, but don't ask me. But there's a lot of overheating, a lot of fires for semi trucks, a lot of tip overs. It's it's a California dev trap. It's pretty much how I look at it. Going down or up, it's a dev trap. Uh, my truck was overheating like a son of a gun, and it's already had always had a overheating issue. But it stopped when I installed that 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 coolant bypass. It really stopped for a long, long time. But then I realized that my fan clutch isn't engaging, and you. you you shouldn't be able to stop your fan by with your hand when it's in excuse me when it's in full force and you also should hear it engage when it's at a certain temperature because just like when you turn your ac on you hear it click click and then it starts spinning faster it does that for a reason uh it actually gets its reading from the coolant temp sensor so while i'm at it the water pump's original just like probably everything else on the damn truck uh so i'm switching out the water pump i'm switching thermostat to a cummins oem 190 and um switching out the temp sensor so that way it gives it the correct readings and fan clutch and we should be golden again it's gonna be videos on all this stuff man and hopefully those are more informational for you guys but why i was investigating this fuel line i found something else wrong with my damn truck oh so, again sorry guys it's, it's it's dark but let's see if i put this light right here this line is your crank case drain and this line is your crank case breather this one spits it out to the environment you know for the good old uh missions crap 
and this one goes back into the motor. Well, when I took this cover off, because back there, where you see what's kind of yellow stained, puddles of oil on top of this thing. There's plenty of videos on this, but I'm still gonna make another one because they don't show you where these hoses are out. The only way to get this bush in is to order the whole new hose. 30, 30 bucks ain't bad. This one's the same way, so I ordered both. Uh, but yeah, this is leaking and it's pissing. You can see all that, all that oil. You're not gonna see it much, but there's a bunch of oil all on the side. And I've already changed the valve cover. I've changed the rocker cover gaskets twice already and obviously it's still not fixing it now i finally found what's leaking there was a puddle of oil underneath this right here this morning when i took this all off more of the story is there's plenty of videos coming i hope this fuel line six was informational to you guys uh if you guys have any questions i'm sorry that usually i'm pretty good i put my phone there so you can see what the heck i'm doing but it's all the way in the back of china um my wife was out here helping me we're yelling and screaming at each other because the light's not where I need it or the bolt's fighting me or yada, yada, yada. Uh, have two people, have your kid, have your brother, whatever. Hold a light. You know, no matter if it's daytime or nighttime, back of that motor sucks. And don't drop any tools. I dropped a 19 mil crow's foot and truck ate it. Can't find it. I'm going to look for it in the morning, but if I can't find it, I can't find it. Luckily, my neighbor over there, he's a dirt bike mechanic, he had a 19 mil crow's foot I was able to use. So I was able to torque those lines. That's not I would have been, you know, S, uh, was it SOL is how you say it, kid friendly. So anyways, and you know, just make sure, you know, when, you're, when your hands are back there, you're not putting too much weight on wires. You're not putting too much weight on, you know, sensors. You don't want to break anything back there because it's a pain. And if you guys are planning on pulling your motor out, you can remove that bracket. I just, I'd tighten it back in because I only plan on doing this job once, but at least I know, and you guys know. So I'm out, you know, sorry as... I'm just talking. It's just one of those days. So I'm out. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. I'll put a link in the description where I got that fuel line. Sorry again, but again, have any questions, let me know. I'm out, guys. Later.